Hello, hello. Just getting some file management stuff set up right now. Um, pull this over. So I'm just getting a folder file set up for the textures so that I've got somewhere to put it. Uh, good evening, Ripa. Glad you could make it. Um, okay. Actually, I think we're good to go with the folders. So I'll minimize that. And then let's see. So I think the last time I showed this guy on a stream, I had kind of finished the retopo. Um, it doesn't have material assigned yet, so that's what we're going to start with. I'm going to hope to do it the fast way instead of the painful way, which is hair particles or hair curves. Um, I'll show the hair curves here real quick. And we'll go to render view. Uh, so there's already a ton of them to the point where it's slowing down the scene. And they, they're nowhere near like dense enough or consistent. And they're hard to control still. So I think for now I'm just going to not use these. And um, I'm actually going to just get rid of them. So if they're ever efficient to use in the future, I might come back to them. But... Um, they just really don't offer any advantages. Uh, looks like I'm going to have to reparent my teeth, which is fine. Um, but this this character basically just has a normal map. So here's what it looks like with no uh, normal map applied. And then I bake the normal map to get the muscle detail. Uh, so now we're just going to add basically... Um, some extra paint detail to look like the body fur. And I've already set up some uh, materials or material slots that we're going to fill with uh, Substance Painter. But the way we're going to do it is uh, we're going to use the procedural materials as much as we can so that they look really consistent and really um, high detail. And then we're going to just do a little bit of paint at the borders so that uh, the body doesn't have like hard lines where the where the texture switches. But I'll pull down this list here so you can see the materials. And then let's go into edit mode and I can show you how I've split this up. So the, the UV unwrap is the same as before because that's how I have the normal map applied. But on this one, I'm going to um, I'm going to define each one of these material regions as certain UV cuts. So uh, I'm using L, and let me let me turn on my screencast here just so people can just so people can see it. But I'm gonna I'm gonna tap L, and then this uh, context menu pops up, and I have UVs selected. So if I click off, it deselects. If I if I click L while I'm highlighting certain um, it only selects those separate UV cuts, which is super handy. So that's what I did uh, for each of these materials. So if I come over here and I select the hands and then click select right underneath there, um, the parts of the mesh that I'm going to use for the hands material is already set up. So when you export this to Substance Painter, the... Um, the materials are going to become basically the layers that Substance Painter can paint on. So if you have um, all of these pre set up, you don't have to to worry about painting the like really small details around uh, the face and stuff because this this part here will be separate from the rest of the face. So I can I can taper the the fur into the skin easier and so on and so forth. Otherwise, I have to be careful how I paint um, 
you know, throughout the body. And it's hard to use procedural stuff if you have to delete certain parts to make way for other procedural textures. So all I should have to do is export this mesh again to Substance Painter. And we should be we should be good to go to start painting. So let's just go ahead and do it. So I'll turn overlays on. Uh, for now, I'm going to hide the rig. Wherever it is, there it is. Just so that our viewport's clean. And then um, I'll save this. All right. And then I'm going to export this mesh as an FBX file. Um, let's just go, let's put it in the Substance Painter 3. And then I'm going to do Selected Objects, only the mesh. Um, I don't think I have to do, I don't think I need to export anything, no animation to bake, and then we'll just export it. So now if I hop into Substance Painter, there it is. I can just start a new file. So I ran through this a couple times before tonight to try to get it, um, I don't know, practiced, I guess, to decide what was the best way. And I just think that um, painting or using pre-made textures is going to be significantly cleaner and easier to control than using the hair curves. So I think hair curves are good for like head hair on a human character or long hair systems where it's just like um, a ponytail or just a group of hair, but doing the full body with it is, is really, really hard to get it to look right. And the performance is awful. So um, I'm just going to avoid that because you can control them a little bit more now than you used to be able to with the particle hairs, but it's still not very good. So I'm going to, I think we got everything set up. I'm just going to hit OK. Loads our guy in just fine. Um, and you can see that this is the low poly version of it. Basically, it's not it's not showing us the muscle detail uh, because that map is not included in here. And um, you can see all of the different layers in here. And if I select them, let's pick a bigger one like the face. Um, it's got the UVs separated out over here, so I can easily switch which ones I'm painting and not painting, um, which is going to be really, really handy. So we'll start with the body and just start doing the, the hairs. And yeah, let's just get to it. So. I'm going to turn on symmetry because it just makes life easier. Instead of a little bit different uh, studio lighting, just so it displays the material a little bit better. I think that one's one of the better ones. Uh, and then I can just I can just come in here and uh, get to going. So if I have Everything turned off except for the body. I should be able to just drag this material on. And it's procedural, so there's there's going to be areas where there's like the seams, basically. Um, I can... I can modify this, and I'll be able to paint on top of it to kind of mask that. So that's not going to be a huge issue. Um, I'll just add a paint layer on top of it. Um, but this should be pretty fine scale. So I want to make sure that they're small enough. And I don't, 
they don't necessarily have to flow super super um aligned to anything but it's probably a good idea to get them as good as i can all right and then i really want these to stick out because i'm not going to have i'm not going to have a whole lot of actual hair on the mesh when we get done with it so i want to make sure that everything is set up the way i want um okay and then yeah so if you're using if you're using these these procedural materials um it's easy to tune all of this just by just by sliding uh the settings in the material so if i if i was painting this it takes a lot more time to basically get 90% of the way done um with this i can just kind of modify a few things real quick and then add a little bit of extra paint where i need it Um, yeah, and then there's also there's also these like kind of these stylized brushes. I don't think they work very well if you want like fairly realistic hair. We can definitely we can definitely try one though and see what it does. I do know they have they have a lot of settings in them, but I think I think they look like intentionally cartoony so yeah like this we're just we're not going to get it to look like the hair that we want um, but for whatever reason there there aren't a lot of good fur materials out there and i'm not i'm not sure why other than maybe they're just hard to make um, and then so what i'll do is to cover up seams, I can add paint in Substance Painter, but I can also add little particle systems in areas where they make sense, like at the bottom of the legs where the hoof starts. I'll just put extra hair tufts down there, and that'll cover up the seam anyway, so I won't have to worry about fixing it with paint. Uh, but that should be that should be pretty easy. I really wish they had. A better way to slide the or or to control the direction like like here I'd really like if the hairs would just follow the curvature but you can't really tell it how to do that at least I don't think so because I don't think you can turn individual um, UV spots on the on the model and substance but looks like a lot of it followed the flow pretty well so i'll just correct some spots so i'm going to add a paint layer and then uh we'll keep we'll keep the same brush so now it should let me go on top of this and then um i want to make sure that our size is set fairly large And now I should be able to should be able to erase. Let's see if I can do it in here. Yeah, see that's the other problem with um with the procedural materials. It's harder to remove spots. So it'd be probably better if I just removed uh some of the some of the layers from in here. But I should I should be able to get it to go just fine anyway. So it'll sit on top of this seam. And what's nice about substance is um it'll actually it'll actually span seams a lot easier than like if you do this in Blender, uh the texture will just kind of fall off onto the next one sometimes. So it can make it really hard to 
know how it's going to combine the different parts, basically. Okay, now it looks to me like this is adding some extra height information we may not want. But essentially, all I'm all I'm trying to do is uh, blur these areas of texture. Yeah, see, I think that's I think that's definitely adding too much height information. So we we want to get rid of that. I don't think we want height. We want basically we want like. Um, Just a um, contrast, really. Or even something like that will probably work okay. Just enough to change it. And then what we'll do is in Blender, we'll, um, we'll play with the shaders a little bit to, to, to make different colors and whatnot. But this is just going to be a really easy way to start with a... Um, basically a good base texture without having to deal with all the hairs on the entire body because it's just awful so but yeah and then the, the the thing i always do when i start texturing characters is i i try to make it perfect and um with this kind of thing where the materials are just not really super widely available at least not really good ones I haven't made any myself yet. I need to, um, but I just need to kind of to go with it and get it to be okay. Because at the end of the day, this guy's going to be covered in all kinds of like armor and stuff anyway. So there's just not a lot of reason to spend hours and hours on this part and then just cover it up. So, um, and then that's that's the other one. I need to make this environment darker. There we go. So I'll just I'll just kind of mask this um, follow path on. I'll just mask this area of where it ties into his rear uh, leg there, and just kind of paint around the the junction so it kind of blurs that line so your eyes won't pick it up as easy. And then hopefully. We won't get too much of that kind of like dark um, shading effect on there, but I think we'll be able to fix that in Blender. So really, I suppose I can probably use it for some additional shading, but we don't really need to. Eh, it might It might add some interest of... Maybe some extra depth, so maybe I'll throw I'll throw a little bit in, but it's gonna it's gonna have to compete with our normal map anyway. So I don't want to get too crazy because um, we're gonna end up having to tune the combination of the normals that this and the normal map that causes his muscle detail. So I don't want to get too crazy with it here and then have to um, basically erase things. Okay, so. I think I'm going to call that good. And then um, for the skin, what is it called? Hide. I think there's a hide that I like. Maybe just the cow hide. I'll just put um, some of this with really, really dark colors on it. Just make it like a black. And then. Um, Yeah, because this is going to be up on top of his body. I'll turn the size down a little bit, and we'll just do... I, th I think they're still called dew claws on... Oops, on a cow, but I don't know for sure. Okay, and then we need to turn off... Height. Yeah, that'll work. And we'll I'll just paint these for now. Um, 
they'll be they'll be relatively minor anyway so shouldn't matter um, but if I wanted to I could come in here and remove the texturing from them so that they're not looking like the fur material but I don't think you're going to be able to tell once it's all said and done so that should be fine um, and then we do have mirror on so I'll do the back real fast get the opacity up higher And it looks like I've got three or four people in here right now, and I haven't heard from you, so say something in the chat just so I know who came by, if you would. I always like talking to people. Otherwise, I'd just be making videos sitting there alone, so let me know. Okay. Um... So I'll kind of I'll kind of name these layers so that I can keep them organized. Uh, but now, like theoretically, I should be able to just only select the ones that are that I want to um, modify, and then let's. Let's add a new fill layer. And then I don't see. Yeah, so it's just his nose inside of his mouth, his lips, basically, and then his eye socket area. So we'll just call this one skin because that's going to be where you see the exposed skin. And then I don't normally use the cow leather. What is it called? One of these leathers is really good for skin. Um, they don't have great, like they don't have, actually, they don't have any textured, um, like skin with fur on it, which is what I would use. So I always come in here and find like a, some sort of a leather that has some bumpiness to it. I always think it's kind of funny to, uh, um, to use a leather on this guy because it's like like his skin is processed or something, but um, plain leather. Try that one. Looks kind of shiny, but we'll see. All right, and then I I want to make sure that. Um, so I want to make sure we're not applying it to everything. So let's get rid of this layer just to make sure. Um, and then these things need to be turned off. Yeah, there we go. Eyes. And nose and mouth. Or if I can. Okay. Yeah. So that's so that's how we'll do it. So this one is just going to be the eyes. We can hide the nose and mouth for now. We'll just focus on this up here. Um, Kurosawa is here. Hello again. Hi, hi. Uh, Ripa says, still here. Reinstalling almost a terabyte of music plugin data. Nice. Yeah, that would take me a very long time on my internet. Uh, P.S. I have those Blender stats for free... Three GPUs, awesome. That's cool. Thank you. Yeah, we'll uh, I'll get those from you at some point. We'll throw them on the list. Um, yeah. So here I'm adding the eye skin. I'm just gonna stay procedural wherever I can. 
Um, this doesn't look great yet, so let's let's scale it up just a little bit. And I really don't want this to be adding normal because I don't want anything to fight with my um, normal map that I have baked. And as long as as long as I keep them uh, separate, I shouldn't have to like combine them with nodes. I need. Let's see. Here we go. Tiling. So I want to make this quite a bit more fine. Have it be a little bit bumpy. And then I'm going to see if I can get the rotation to line up better. So I don't want there to be a visible line. I guess that actually doesn't look too bad. So let's do that. And then I'm going to give this thing just a little bit of roughness. Yeah. So normal intensity shouldn't do anything. Height range can probably be lower. Want it to be a bit rough. I don't think his skin needs to be like super shiny or anything. So probably do that. Yeah, that should look cool. And then that's about it for that one. So I'm just going to go, uh, I'm going to go right over here to the nose and mouth. And then I'll turn that on, turn the eyes off. So and after this, the, the hooves are super easy, so that won't take long. I'm hoping this keeps the same settings I just put on. Which it probably won't, but I'll copy them fast if it didn't. Yeah, it looks like it's still... It's still got... Um, it's still got to be modified again, but that's okay. So this is for his nose. Yeah, you can you can do quite a bit in here. I just won't need to basically. Um all right. So we'll make it fairly fine. But like here a um somebody who is more worried than I am about it would probably change the inside of the mouth to a different color or to a different material because it probably isn't just going to look like skin. But I'm not going to worry about it because you'll virtually never see it or um, it'll probably be so dark that it just it just won't show up. Um, all right. What else can we do? See if I see if tiling a little bit more makes it look better. It's definitely interesting, but it's got it's got too much of a offset going on. I think I'll do it like that. Leave it kind of larger grain. That should look fine. And then we'll play with the height again just a little bit. Um, minimum roughness. Okay, now let's turn the eyes on too, because the skin should kind of look consistent. I think that'll be fine. Why not use one or two materials? Um, I could. Cause what I've what I've also got in here is um I've got materials for each like separate set of UVs basically. Um, and then that way I can I can control them a lot easier. So if I turn these all on, um, I'm just adding the parts separately, and then I'll do a little blending at the edges. But um, 
yeah, you know, another way to do it would be to, to use multiple materials and mix the shaders. Um, what else can we, what else can we do? Uh, but yeah, like, so I'll come back and paint a little bit of hair onto the skin around the eyes and the nose so that there's not a hard line. Um, but yeah, you could, you could use multiple materials. You can mask certain ones out. Um, basically right now I'm just going for trying to get, um, some results really fast because a lot of them is going to be covered up, but yeah, you, you, there's a lot of ways to do it. Basically the only one I really don't want to deal with is, um, using hair to cover his whole body. Because that's what I wanted to do, and it's just, it's still not better uh, with the hair curves. It's not better for this, like, amount of work that it takes. Actually, it didn't turn out too bad. But yeah, and then, you know, I definitely, I definitely could have um, played with where the cuts were and stuff more too. But like, I'll probably put a little tuft of hair here by his ear. He'll have little hair tufts by the base of his horns, um, probably the edge of his nose, stuff like that. So it shouldn't be too bad. Um, and then I know there's, I know there's ways that you can blend the textures as well. So I may, I may or may not do that in Blender if I need to. Um, yeah. So while I'm, while I'm in here, I will, um, I'll come in and just, I won't be able to paint on these other layers. So, uh, cause they're, they're not part of this material set. So I'll just kind of do like I did before and I'll blur the lines. Um, I need to make sure the normal maps are turned off for this material, but I'll start just blurring some of these, uh, lines by where the UVs are apparent. And then, um, you know, what we do with the hair particles will also help solve that. But this is just going to be a super easy way to do this for now. And then I, the, what ends up happening is I end up spending way too much time on trying to make it look a certain way. And then it just, uh, it may or may not ever get there, but like this guy, just, I really got to get to the point where we're animating him and doing the other, the other steps in the process. So. I agree. There it is. So for the horns, I actually like to do a um, ivory material. And this should be really, really easy to work with with uh, procedurals. But this um this preset material in here is really is really nice. Um it has a ton of options. So you can get some cool effects with it without doing a whole lot. Roughness, I'm not too worried about that. Um, all right, height range. Yeah, and then um, one other thing to note in Substance Painter is when you start to, when you start to play with uh, displacement mapping, when you take it to Blender, it's possible that you'll have some goofiness going on because Blender's gonna take it and scale it really high. 
So you have to be careful because you'll get like, uh, you'll get really, really weird results with um, the displacement turned on in Blender. I still don't think this looks very high resolution, if you will. That's pretty, I mean, that's pretty cool. Natural wear. Maybe make that parameter just a little bit less. That should look okay. And then he's got He's got a seam on here, so I'll um, I'll add a paint layer, and then try to maybe blend these a little better. Which we'll see. We'll see if I can get them to to look better or not, but. Um, okay, actually, let's I wonder if we can just also rotate this and that might be easier. So you can, you can rotate the entire texture too. Oh, I'm in the wrong one. There we go. Um, could you put the seam on the underside? Then again, it'll be visible from everywhere at some point. Yeah, and uh, it will because if, like, say I don't have a seam that goes down the the horn, you're just going to have um, a really stretched texture then. The one thing you can do is, like, say, let's just get rid of, let's just get rid of the fill layer. And then we'll get rid of this new paint layer. So if if I just do this instead, which is probably a better idea, um, so I'll select this this brush. Um, oh, I've got to get rid of that. I want a paint layer. So so now <clears throat> it takes just a little more setup at the very beginning. Um, but if I paint, when I paint over that seam, Substance Painter will bridge that seam on its own automatically. And the reason that I split these textures up is now I don't have to worry about painting on his head because it's just not um, it's not selectable currently because I'm dealing with an entire different set of faces. So honestly, this this is probably just the way to do it. Um, but then, like, I can come in here and just make this a uh, very very large brush so that there's not a lot of repetition. There's not the tiling. Poor man, Pokemon. Hello. Welcome to the stream. How's the bull coming? He's doing good, man. Trying to trying to get it to the point of uh you know, putting it to use finally instead of just texturing for infinite foreverness. But yeah, dude. Um, man, I think that's looking pretty good. Natural wear density. Wear intensity. Yeah, there's there's a lot of settings in this one. It's kind of fun to play with. I don't want to do that. Honestly, I think that's pretty good. And then what, what else, uh, you know, kind of a design choice you can make? Another one would be to not mirror this. Because at some point, people can see this and say, hey, these look the same. I don't think anyone will notice this, you know, on this guy. But you could turn mirroring off so that the, the two horns don't match. I suppose, 
Let's go to Substance Painter 3. I just haven't saved. I figure I ought to save. Somebody may notice that these aren't the same, but I'm not worried about it. Um, eyes, body are done. Face is done, basically. Um, yeah, let's just do the hands. And the hands, I think I'm basically here, I'll, I'll kind of mix them. So I'll put the skin texture on the inside of the hands and then the outside will be the, the fur texture, basically. So let's go back to that. Uh, it wasn't hide, what did I put, leather? I think it's this guy here. And here, here I'm going to do um, some painting because I don't I don't want to paint on the back of it uh, because I don't want to have to fight the paint where the um, where the the fur is going to be. So I'm just going to try to avoid it, and then I'll put fur on top of this at the kind of the seam of it. Let's see, I need to put the. This this will work fine. I'll tune it. I'll tune it here in a minute. Yeah, I've got a really weird um UV situation here on the on the thumb. I kind of forgot about that. With the with the other attempts at the textures I had, it actually wasn't too big of a deal before, but you can see that the texture stretches and gets confused right there. That's because uh, the UV map for the thumb actually stacked it up really bad here. So it just causes this kind of um, single color here, which is, is not really going to matter as much as it looks like it would because I'm going to just... Um, the, the normal map with the details on his thumb are going are gonna to cause that not to look like very much of anything. So um, not going to worry about it. And the back of his hand here is going to have so much hair on it that it'll be fine. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm just erasing the skin from the back. Because this will all just be hair texture. Even here I think we'll, we'll just go with that. Um, and the skin is probably too bumpy, so I'll just, um, I'll get my leather paint back out and I'll turn, I'll turn the, uh, intensity of the grain and wrinkles down. So I want it to have a little, but it's going to be somewhat smooth. Even that might be a little bit too much. Panels. Um, we let's see what what should we do here. Roughness can probably go up because everything else was rough. That way it doesn't look real glossy. I think that's actually going to look pretty good. We'll deal with that thumb at a later date if we decide we need to. Um, Kurosawa says, any suggestions? My substance can't detect RX 580 to render or bake some textures on settings. Uh, maybe not supported or what. Instead, my Office PC with uh, GT 1030 can bake and render it with the GPU. Um, so you're saying your substance painter can't do it? Not your... Not because I, I think we talked the other day about Blender doesn't support the RX 580. Um, but yeah, no, I the the 580. 
may not be supported in substance painter either. I'm not really sure. All right. Um, yeah, so here I'm just I'm just gonna paint the fur on top of the hand here. And really I want it I want it to overlap plenty with the skin on the fingers. So I don't want any of uh, the hand to be unmaterialed. Um, yep, it uses my Phenom 2 for baking the textures and it takes forever to bake 2K textures. Yeah, I bet. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Um, I think with texture baking and stuff, you probably you probably aren't going to have luck if you um, it'd be the same as rendering if you're because I think normally texture baking is done with cycles. So it's it's probably going to be the same issue as um, you know, you would have for rendering too, unfortunately. Okay. Um, I got to turn the normals off again. We don't need height. Really, I just want a little bit of color there. Yeah, that's how I'll do it. Just add the color and then we'll kind of come back with the hair. Um, yeah, the... The uh, normal map in Blender solves a lot of these issues. So, like, I'm not going to take a ton of time on the... Uh, fingernails because it's probably just not going to matter at all. Um, they'll look decent regardless. And it looks like I keep overriding my skin here. Yeah, in areas like this, you know, the... Uh, Having even a second or another another material here probably would have been a good idea. I just I just want to make sure that there's not a lot of uh, fur here and. I'll, I'll turn down this height information quite a bit in Blender. So it shouldn't look, it shouldn't look nearly as dramatic as it does here. Try to stay away from the end of that thumb a little more. But again, you know, you're not really going to get that close to the hand. So um, until I know I need to make it better, I'm probably not going to worry about it. But I think that looks decent for now, so we'll move on. Um, hooves, I think, is all we have left. And that one I'm going to just use a real easy, um, real easy procedural for like a limestone or something like that, because I've done that before. So let's go in, let's see what they have for rock. Oh, no, 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 no. Marble. Marble is the best. So marble is cool because uh, you get you get some like wear in there. So if I just if I just drag this on, um, I can I can play with the colors and the tiling and stuff. But 
you can make it look so uh like it's kind of got uh wear and weathering on it i this this marble may or may not be the one i i stick with but height range but some of these some of these let you tune the color a whole lot more so um the smart materials in here are, are a lot of fun to play with. Looks like we got some red going on here, so I don't want I don't want any of that. Let's try Let's try another material. I I have plenty, so we may as well try them. I don't know if you want cracks in it. This one might be good. And then I can just make it darker. Yeah, I like that. That'll look pretty cool. And then it's definitely way too shiny. So let's get some... Let's get some roughness on there. And this is a, another one that probably isn't going to really be in the frame too much. All right, and then let's scale the cracks up a little. And then, you know, these aren't these aren't going to look very realistic if I start to like add a whole bunch of crack lines in it. I just think it looks cool. Even I don't know, even like that looks okay. So I might I might just stick with that then. And what else do we have? Save this one more time. So then uh yeah, so I don't I don't want to have to do the um the corrections on the edges here in Blender. Although I, I suppose you could, I'm just going to come in here and um, add some paint. I don't really need those UVs visible, so I'm just going to move them. Um, yeah, but I can come in here and add a paint layer and go back to that fur brush. And hopefully, hopefully I can just paint right on top of this. I think I'm on the eyes. Oh, there we go. And I don't, I don't have to get anything too crazy. I just want to be helping blend that a little bit so it's not apparent that it's a line. And then, um, and then we'll go ahead and maybe also add some some extra texture in in blender just by adding the uh some hair around that area so like when i do this it's going to be it's going to be a lot easier to just add a few hairs for accents basically on his body with the um hair particle system versus doing the whole body and and trying to deal with it cuz it just doesn't it just doesn't work that well. Um, I want to learn how to how to make it work because it's cool, but it it's just it's just not currently worth the time. So here I'm just going to blend some of this, and then I'll come back with the uh, eraser and kind of clean up the edge. But All right. Yeah, so like here, if you picture, um, there'll just be like an extra set of hair along this, this face here. That's kind of how I'll solve the 
uh, the hair issue in this exact spot. And then, well, he doesn't need he doesn't need hair inside of his mouth. So I'll just remove it in areas where you would see it. Like, like right here, you might see it. Otherwise, you probably won't. So really won't matter. Uh, but now we don't have as hard of a line here. So um, it'll, make it, it'll make it much, much, much harder for your eyeball to spot that interface. And then we'll further blur it when we get in to Blender, if we need to. Uh, J2 says, yo, hello, how are you? Welcome to the stream. We are just having some fun with textures right now, so. Actually, we're about done with this portion. And then there will be very minimal work to get these materials to apply in Blender. We might add just a couple hair systems for fun. Otherwise, uh, it's going to be time to start building clothes for them finally. Let's see, that'll probably look okay. Yeah, and what's cool is um, I can come back here in in uh, at a later time and modify these if I really don't like how they turned out and basically just um, reapply the, the new material. Come on, let me let me get the, the brush out here, please. Um, not sure why it is not letting me select that material. Um, this is Substance Painter, yes. Um, I have Substance Painter, and then I think I do have Designer, but yeah, I don't, I don't have custom materials. Well, I'd say yet, but we'll see if I ever do. They're kind of annoying. Um, but I suppose, like anything, I just need to learn. And you know what? I don't know why. I don't know why this isn't working currently. Um, but this is one spot where a tuft of hair would really make a lot of sense. So I'm not as mad about that having a seam on it. But, I mean, you can already tell the eyes and the mouth look better than they did. So that'll be fine. The hands are okay. The hooves will handle with um, bigger particle textures too, so that'll be fine. Um, yeah, I think I think we're good to go. Um, also, I wasn't planning on having this character be all white. Um, still on eraser mode. Hey, you're right. I am glad you pointed that out. That's funny. Yeah, good. Uh, good catch. Yep, I do that fairly often. All right, just just a little bit, just right there. Okay, and it just kind of blurs it. I know that it's not connecting to the to the head very well, but we'll solve that. Uh, yeah, thanks for pointing that out. That was well, I'd say embarrassing, but I'm past the point of worrying about that anymore. Um, I guess we could clean up the hands if we wanted a little bit. I've been there before, though. Yeah, I I don't use Substance Painter as much as um, just Blender itself. So if you're going to catch me on things, it's definitely going to be in here. I'm sure you still can on Blender plenty, but but here is going to be my my biggest issues. Um, I don't really mind this inside of the hand. I think that's fine. 
All right. So what we'll do is we'll take this to Blender and um, I'll actually add color, hopefully, maybe, by using the shaders um, instead of trying to color it in here because uh, the, this fur, this exact fur, doesn't let me change the color easily. And really the goal here is to make it as easy as we can. So um, I don't know. I think the transitions everywhere else look decent. So I'm just going to export this. Um, I'll hit export textures. I'll take all of them. Change this to 16 bits because bigger number equals better, right? Just like anything else. Um, but no, basically, I'll just um, uh, retopo three. Here we go. Made a nice little textures folder for it. Um, yeah, if anything needs the 16 bit file type, then it can have it. Otherwise, it's probably a waste of file size, but that's okay. And these will take just a minute because every single part of this has a separate material now, and all of them I put on 4K, which again is probably wasteful, but um, I want Blender to have as much data as it needs. So um, I'm just gonna leave it, but I think we're okay here. So I'm just gonna save the file. Now I can come back into Blender. So just to recap, here's what we have now. Uh, this is just a normal map. So I'm gonna select that guy, go into shading, now this part is super, super, super easy. Um, I'm actually going to get rid of that. That's the old body color that I was kind of practicing this with. Um, I'm going to leave my normal map alone. And then I'm going to select the shader and hit Control plus Shift plus T. And it brings up this little menu. I can go into textures. And then I'm going to select everything in here except for... Uh, anything, well, let's see. I need to try to exclude any of them that have normals in them. So I'm going to do that. And the reason being is I don't want it to interfere with my uh, current normal map. And I want to see what just the base color modifications make it look like. And then I can come back in later and add back the normal data, but I it's not probably gonna be enough. To, and we'll use the displacement node to get the effect we want. Um, okay, now hopefully these don't have to be in order because this may or may not screw it up, but it shouldn't. So. Let me think. This is going to break it. I That's not how you do it. So um, all of these slots have different parts. So that's what we need to do. So let's, slot one is the body. So um, I'm glad I remembered that. I have to do, I have to do them one at a time. Uh, but basically any one of these that refers to the body. So, oh, well now, now they're sorted. Um, body roughness. So any of them that say body on them, they're going to correspond to those faces. So then I set up the shaders. Um, obviously, sometimes it'll take a minute to load them because they can be heavy. But see, I'm not, nothing's, nothing's become tied to the normal map. So uh, we're not, we're not going to have any conflicts there. You can always try to add them in and then just mix the mix the results or try to combine them, but um, I don't think we'll need them. Because if I zoom in, all we really want is this uh, kind of texture detail on here. But now, if I want the shape of the muscle, I can just turn this up or down. And if I want um, the displacement due to the... Uh, hair colors, I'll, I'll get that off of the base color. So that's kind of the, that's kind of the way that we'll go about it. But so for now, I just got to plug all of these into the different slots. 
So the next one is the hands. So I'm going to do the same thing and select all of the hands ones except the normal map. And then instead of our stand in black texture, we'll get we'll get this uh, extra look here. And then um, these materials won't look done yet because we're also not in cycles render yet. We're still in the um, the material preview mode, so it's not going to look right yet. So just keep that in mind. Select these and move them out so you can see what's going on in the shaders. Um, all right. So let's go on to slot three, which is the eyes. Same exact thing, control shift T, everything except normals with the eyeballs. Load that up. Or if I can. There we go, I'll just do that. It's it's definitely an ugly shader setup right now because of where all the all the connections are overlapping each other, but it's fine. Um so now you can see the eye the eye skin came in. Next slot is the face. Control shift T. All right, starting to look starting to look better. Horns. Um face color, no normals. Boom. Sweet. Nose and mouth. So um, the other way I normally do this is by just painting on one whole image texture for the entire body. And um, this is just so much easier to control. And I'll show you why in just a second. But basically, if I want to change the color of just certain parts, uh, it's very, very easy for me to do that if these are all separated. If I use, um, if I use just one, for the whole body and I tried to run a color ramp to change the color of like the fur, it's going to modify the color for every single part. And obviously they, they don't match. So that's going to just be terrible. So this takes a little extra work to apply it, but, um, for every other step after this, it's just easy. Okay. So that's what he looks like now. So, um, Originally, I I had intended this guy to be some sort of like like a gray color um, or a mixture of colors with maybe some orange in it. So I'm going to just play around with shaders for a minute and see what everything looks like. But let's go back to the body material and I'll show you what we can do. So now um, what this is doing is it's just plugging in. I'll pull this up. It's just plugging in color, metallic map, roughness map, emission, and displacement. And um, nothing is set here, but I can I can change the colors and I can use just a color ramp uh, to change the mix of colors. And then really you can add noise in there to change how the colors apply and stuff like that. Uh, but it's just it's just really easy to fine-tune whatever you want to see now. So if I come in here and I start sliding this up to black, I can mix these and have patches. And then you can change how it how it maps it. Uh, you could you could flip these. So something like that is pretty cool. So he's almost like um mostly black with patches of white on him 
and really but really at this point you just you just get to pick you know what what do you think is cool and then instead of so if i don't want that to be black i, I want it more of a gray so that it doesn't have any actual black parts i can just do that and then i can make these whatever color i want so uh, let's add let's add another another color so if i want to have like just a little bit of um highlights on certain parts let's see and there's there's um there's ways you can control how these map to because it's it's using i believe it's using how it was painted to determine how to set these up but basically what i'm what I'm trying to do now is, um, yeah, here's what I wanted to do. I'm just trying to add a bunch of control. So um, I don't want it to just be all one color or one like range of colors. I can, I can really fine tune this a lot. Once you kind of have some of the, the colors picked it's just a matter of changing the placement um let's see so i think on our on our left side here uh our position doesn't do very much on the left and here i don't probably want it to be as light cuz we're not we're not going for a lot of white in there just maybe some little highlights, like maybe some of those. And I could also do this with the um, a curve graph node. Uh, but I, you know, I think this is going to be pretty cool without having to do that. So, and really what uh, what I want to do here is I want to mix them so that you don't have abrupt color changes because here it's just going like white to white to black, basically. So I want to make it so that um, it's nice and smooth transition. The different colors kind of look folded in. And then he's got just some patches. So like that's, I think that already looks pretty cool, but you could also use some, some other nodes like separate X, Y, Z, and you could have the um how high on his body control the um the color you could you could add some randomness so if i wanted to add a um say i wanted to add a noise texture uh, i gotta figure out which one yeah you don't want to do that side i think you want to do the front end of it maybe yeah so noise texture will allow me to uh randomize how these are laid out so let's crank up the detail let's bring down the scale maybe distortion So if I wanted them to be entirely just a mixed color, I could do that. I think that kind of is confusing the lines of what should be the fur, though. So I may leave the distortion off a little bit. Um, but yeah, like this, the noise, the noise can kind of um, just change how it applies. Or if I can change what dimensions this works in. Uh, but yeah, so if you if you dabble a lot more in the shaders, you can definitely make better use of this. Um, but now I just have to now I just have to slide my 
little nodes around. And I can really tune in the color. And um, uh, let's see. I really want them to be a darker color with some highlights. All right, so we want that. This one can be white, maybe. Uh, yeah, and then the the other way that I've added uh, body hair lookalikes before is is by um, is by changing the surface just to have a basically a noise texture that is spread around the body and then it just makes it look like um lines that are spread out and it kind of just gives it like a fake swirly looking texture to it Let's see and i don't know i should probably just use the um the max and min nodes because they I could really lock in some of this, but let's see if, if I can get the distortion to help me modify this a little bit. I think my, my little gray ones here are maybe not doing much anymore. Um, that's actually not too bad. And then what I'll do is, um, I'll copy these and we'll attempt to bring them over to like the face. We'll paste them and then I'll throw them in here. And I should be able to get real, real similar results without too much extra work um so that actually looks cool and let's let's go to render preview so you can see um what it actually looks like so this this is the body now it looks a lot better in a more realistic lighting scenario which i need to turn up my environment brightness here there we go scene world Bring it down a little. Okay. I feel like these um, world shading, they're just so bright, but I probably also have too many lights in the scene. So something like that's gonna give us a better idea. But now what I can do is I can have all of this color information translate into displacement and bump. So um, just the just the variance in the roughness on his skin is going to look like it's um, fur to begin with. But once you add some bumpiness and you get a little bit of a shadow in there, it's going to be even better. So what I can do is uh, just look at kind of smaller area I can take I can take instead of the displacement node that it came with I can remove that and I can plug in the color to the displacement node and then I just have to make sure that uh, my material has that enabled which I can't use displacement on certain materials that come from um, substance because I get this like explosion thing going on. I don't remember why that happens. So normally I'll just say bump, but 
um, here I should I should be able to tune. Oh, that's why, because we're on the face. I should I should now be able to tune uh, shaders here to determine how smooth or rough this looks texture wise. So if I change this really high, it's just basically making it look like it catches more light. Um, I'll actually leave it relatively low. I'll probably do that for the body as well. Because I don't think this one's set up. Uh, it is actually a little set up. But um, I'm not going to play with it too much because that's actually also um, really good. So what I what I can do is I can come in and add patches of other colors manually by painting on it if I want to. Um, I think for now I'm just going to kind of leave them gray though. And then I'll just modify the other things like the uh, the eyes and the hands and stuff. I'll just I'll just throw our um, modified color scheme in here a little bit just so it ties in like that. Um, the one problem is where we have the skin texture on around the eye. We don't want to override that. So I could probably change, I could probably change the mapping or something uh, to be tricky with it. I guess really if it's probably not going to make too much difference so long as it doesn't stick out. I mean, even that's fine. And then I'll probably come back and add, um, you know, eyelash hairs and something at some point. So it's not, it'll be fine. But uh, like one, one area that it'll be a problem is on the horns. So let's just, let's just paste those in here. If I, if I put the gray material on, it's going to control the entire horn. So I'd want to I'd want to also add mapping nodes and and basically control what colors come from where. Um, because if I if I delete a bunch of these, this this color ramp is um, a little confusing because it's not necessarily going to just go white to black it just it depends on how it's set up so if i disconnect the noise texture here and just run a color ramp um it's basically gonna say the 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 color map that you've made is what it's going to base on so uh like here's a good example it's converted colors based on what it decided or on on mathematical values and it's left these little blotches which were the texture from the horns originally so um the white to black isn't just white color to black color it's like original value to um to black basically if that makes any sense so i'm probably going to just leave the horns alone and we'll just deal with having this white on the base um, and I'll just I'll just come add some some hairs there so it doesn't matter uh, the hands those should be a little bit more of a pain to deal with but let's get them thrown on there so here I could I could do something more yeah because like this here isn't going to make a lot of sense so let's paste our nodes in Let's get rid of the noise because we don't necessarily need that here. So now here, um, it's definitely giving us a different skin color on the hands. But if I can figure out uh, which which one of these presets is controlling it, I should be able to just kind of manually change it. 
So if I wanted to keep that that brown shade, um, I could come in and just kind of manually add it. The biggest thing is I don't want to add I don't want to add a lot of that white ring there. So maybe I'll just take that node out. And then I'll just get the colors to tie into the arm a little. But, you know, other than the thumb having that weird UV problem, which I'll fix later. Um, other than that, it ties in fairly well. So I'm probably going to just call that good for the moment. And we'll just keep moving. We'll go on to the next thing. So um, I think the hooves are fine because we don't have any fur painted onto them. So we'll leave them be. Um, what else do we even have? Yeah, so now, oh yeah, the nose, the nose. We'll have to try to ramp that one. Um, I think this is actually going to be a better fit. So let's just copy this nose or that node and go to the nose and mouth material. Paste this color ramp. And the color doesn't exactly match what we had before, but we can try to tune it. So now, uh, one thing one thing to note, we I show I show these add-ons and like Substance Painter a lot, but uh, you don't have to have Substance to do any of this. You can do all of this in Blender. So hopefully you don't see, um, you know, people using paid programs and go, oh, I'm not gonna just I'm not just gonna get into this and buy a bunch of stuff. Uh, you can do everything I've done in Blender, uh, and especially like uh, one of the better ways, which I've used a few times, is to um, is to stencil paint. So you would basically you use a preset texture image as a stencil, and then you can manually paint it onto the body. So I'll show that maybe in a video sometime. I'll compare the different ways to texture. Um, but I'm not, I would say I'm not good enough at it yet to be like an authority on it. So I don't want to just be fumbling through it, um, in a video format. That's why I don't mind doing it on a stream because, uh, you know, I can get away with kind of just tweaking it as we go. So, um, eventually I'll make a full, like, here's everything to know about texturing tutorial. I actually think this this is looking pretty good. I just wanted the hands to match better. I'm gonna go back to the eyes. I think I, I got that figured out just a little. So I'm gonna copy this one again, go back up to the eyes. Um, we don't need the noise texture. Paste this in. Whoa. There we go. Color to color, color to base color. And then we're going to keep a lot of that brown. Um, here I can get rid of the black. Should be able to just fade. Oh, maybe the maybe the black is what it needs. So it's just it's just adding this uh, variation around the sides there. That's all we're doing. Really close. Yeah. Yeah, all right, that's looking nice. And then all of the skin matches up. Um, the back of his hands looks okay because uh, it's not gonna matter anyway, but you can still see the normal map for the um, the fingernails, basically. We'll still have a little bit of a shape to them. But otherwise, yeah, that's that's the most of the body fur that we'll deal with. And again, he'll have so much armor on and stuff that it's not going to matter at all. You know, really what most of his body looks like. I just want, if it's visible, I want it to be convincing enough that people don't go, oh man, look at that. Like, that looks terrible right there. Like, I don't want, I don't want your eyes to go right to 
something that just doesn't make any sense at all. But um, let's let's play with our normal map just a little. So you can see that having texture on the body might take a little of the muscle detail out. So I can uh, I can crank that up or down, but we just have to be careful not to overdo or underdo it. But I think right around like one to one and a half on this exact model looks good. So I'm just going to leave it at like 1.4. I think that's plenty. Save the file. Uh, yeah. Let's go back to layout so we get a bigger, bigger workspace here. I think we're good to go for texture for now, though. So now it's got to compile shaders. Hopefully nothing crashes out. And so this is actually what it'd look like in Eevee, which really is pretty cool on its own. But let's go in and turn on some lights and just see what he looks like. Yeah, and his feet aren't very dark, so I could go in there and blend in some um, darker colors. Um, Ripa says, sorry, dudes, I'm back. Had to mute audio. He's looking good. Yeah, no, no problem, man. Thanks. Thanks for the compliment, too. But I think I think um, the trade off here is worth it. So, you know, like the skin still looks just fine. And you can see skin on his nose and his eyes, but not having to deal with 5 million um, hair curves and having the performance hit that that brings is just a huge deal. So just for reference, um, right now, my scene it's saying is using 11 out of 24 gigs of VRAM. So um, even just with these 4K textures applied, just as you know, image textures basically, I'm already demanding 10 or 11 gigs of RAM. I've had I've had much simpler characters with full body hair particles on them that easily eat up 20 gigs of VRAM. And that's just with one character at a time. So it's uh it's just not feasible at all. I mean it's just awful to have to run it. So I think I think the little bit of realism that you lose for not having the full body hair is is way worth it. But let's go let's go into the hooves here. And I'm I'm actually I'm actually going to throw this color ramp on, and we're going to just tune. We're just going to tune them a little darker. Um, it is sucking the VRAM. Every every one of those has a 4K texture. So that's part of it. Let's see. I need to get need to get the highlights on the right side. Let's see. Do I want black on both? Yeah, it's gonna be something more like that. I could probably do this more in the in the curves, but um, I just want to have a little bit of color variation there, uh, and then it's it's really it's really looking like I can't get it to be a super dark black color. I mean the the lighting is causing a little of it, but I, it it just looks really gray. I can't get it to be super black, but that's okay too. Um, I think they look fine. Um, Blender from time to time is more heavy and and better than the old two point seven X version. Uh, oh, is that actual hair and fur dynamic or just 4K textures? I'm rigging a character now with a ton of real hair, and it's using around 7.9 um, gigabytes for rendering. 
yeah. Uh, no, this is this is image textures, but I have seven of them. So I have seven slots. So the body, the hands, the eyes, face, horns, nose and mouth, and then hooves. So each one of those has a separate 4K image texture, which some of them didn't need to be 4K for sure. But um, I mean, it's it's convincing enough. Like from far away, you I don't I don't think you can tell that they're not hair. Uh, but yeah, he doesn't have any hair curves or particle system on him yet. But uh, basically, now what I would do is just add extra ones for highlights. So, um, like on his feet would be a good spot, on his hands would be a good spot, and then like tufts on his ears and by his horns and you know, whatever stuff like that, which I'll actually probably add later because when I add armor to this guy, he's going to be like, um, well, basically, he'll be like a uh, Roman, like a Roman centurion and the armor on his lower body will be more like what their horses would have had. So he'll have like the, he'll have like the draped cloth on kind of the back end of him and he'll have armored plates on the front and stuff like that. So a lot of him is going to be covered up anyway, which is another reason why I didn't want to add hair, hair to the whole body because you're, you end up just having to hide some of it or smash it down. Um, if you want to take armor and, you know, put it on and off, you're going to have areas that clip through the, the mesh of the armor and other issues. But, um, you know, doing it as images, that doesn't even come into play. So, um, but yeah, I, I'll end up having significant amounts of VRAM use, but it's not going to be as bad as full body hair. So should be good to go. Um, but yeah, what, what time is it? It's only 10. So I am contemplating starting on the, um, armor, uh, with an upturned centurion helmet underneath. Well, we'll see. I don't know. It's going to be, it's going to be really hard to control that in animating. That's what I'll say. Yeah, but yes, that that would definitely be a problem if uh if you looked like this dude. Let's see. So, let's see what happens if I turn the light. Um I actually I want to come in here and um I want to take the I want to take the sky texture off and I want to make this an environment texture so that it looks better. Um, I have to remember where to do that. Background and then go to environment texture. And then I think I have to go reload it, don't I? Yep, I do. So I'll pull this up. So I have just a few HDRI files. So I'll open, I'll open the actual HDRI. Um, in the scene here instead of instead of using just the blender's little um sky texture and this should look a bit better let's see and then i can i think i can turn that off now and this should be fairly representative of what it'll look like yeah so, I mean, he looks pretty good with shading turned on, but yeah, I mean, I guess at this point he's basically like 90% done with texturing. Um, I suppose up there on his horns, I'll, I'll maybe modify this color just a little, but um, we'll solve that. We'll solve that with some hair later. But yeah, so right now, uh, okay, dudes. I'm beat. It's 4 a.m. here, and I've burnt myself out with massive storage adjustments all night. Uh, I'll leave the stream running as always. Peace. Yeah, thanks for being here. And uh, I guess thanks for running the stream, even though you're not watching. That's that's helpful. I know watch time hours are going to be the one that's hard to hard to get. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully next time you see him, um, 
he'll look like he's ready to do something instead of just, you know, having one more step in the future always. But, but yeah, thanks for coming by, dude. It's always good to, it's always good to talk. Um, all right. Yeah. And one, one thing I actually thought about doing, uh, was pulling up the Daz studio has centaur armor that looks like Roman armor. And I was tempted to just try to bring it in here, uh, you know, to, to just use what is already out there. But I think if I do that, I'm going to have issues with trying to make it fit. And at some point I'm just going to end up having to modify and build it anyway. So, but let's just, I'm just going to look at some reference images for, um, and this is on my other screen, but I'm going to look at some reference images for like a Roman horse. And it looks like, at least according to what I see, there's a lot of a lot of armor plating on them, more than I kind of would have thought. So I might just kind of make it up, which is probably fine. That's probably better anyway. Um, versus trying to copy something because you know what's the fun in just copying things? But. I still am not really sure if I should show um, images I haven't licensed on YouTube. I don't think you're supposed to because that would sort of kind of be stealing. So I don't want to do that. Um, What kind of smart material or brush did you use on Substance? Uh, yeah, I still have. Oh, I don't have paint pulled up. Um, I assume you mean for the body hair because that's kind of the one that's that's not as obvious um oh and ripa if you're still in here um if you want to just comment on a video with the results that works fine uh i don't think we've met up on discord or anything yet so um but yeah if you just want to comment somewhere you can list them out and i'll throw them on the spreadsheet Uh, that should be this one, I think. So okay, yeah. So let's load this guy up. So for the for the for the body here, um, let's turn. I'll turn off the extra little sections of paint I did. But this is just the procedural. If you come up to the material library, I think it's a standard one. It's called um, fur brush base material. And I don't remember if I added that or if I bought it or if it came with it or not. So um, it also is possible that it's from one that I bought for Blender because that kind of sounds familiar to me now. It would have been more than a year ago if, if this is the one. And then I just imported it. Um, because really, this this software will use any... Um, SBAR material as um, as a smart material, and then like there, that's why there's no color. I think is because it didn't convert the color part of the material very well. Um, but I can fix the color in Blender. You know what I mean? So yeah. So for the body here, it was just that uh, fur brush material, which honestly ends up looking better than it should. Um, for the skin, it's just like I use like a leather or and then um, maybe take away the wrinkles and and some of the shininess because, you know, his skin probably wouldn't be like super shiny. Um, but that's what I did for that. For the horns, uh, I actually use ivory, which I know is one I downloaded. So it's called ivory beige. And this one is a very good one. It's tunable quite a bit. Um, so I actually painted this one on. I didn't use it as a smart material. Uh, let's go to it, though. Let's go to the horns. Um, yeah, so I just, whoops, I just painted 
um, on here so I could change some of the settings, but it lets you, uh, if you look on the right side here in the preview, it lets you change a lot of, um, a lot of the parameters like the, the brown, like the wear color on it and stuff like that. It lets you tune that quite a bit. So it's pretty nice. Um, but that's one I got either from the store from Adobe or from, um, or it came inside of it already. Cause it, when you subscribe to this, uh, you pay yearly or monthly or whatever, but you get so many texture downloads from their store every month and then you can bring in your own. But, uh, yeah, no, so that's, those are the ones I use for this guy. Um, I won't save this. And I just, I wish there were better ones because it'd be nice if I could, if I could tune the, uh, the fur color inside of substance, but with that material, I can't, I can't find that fur material. It might've been an add-on I bought for Blender. So if you, if you Google fur brush for Blender, that may be where I got it, but I don't even have those linked in a Blender file currently. So I don't really remember where I even have it stored, but I think I may have downloaded it off of uh, Turbo Squid or something. But I know at some point in, in the past, I, I did get so frustrated with hair particles that I, that I just ended up buying something. And that, that's probably honestly what it was. But, uh, okay. So underneath here, this guy doesn't have any clothing. So I'm just going to start... I'm just going to start getting ready to set up clothing. Oh yeah, the teeth. I don't I don't know why the teeth the teeth become disconnected when I mess with the rigs for some reason. So I'm going to I'm going to just parent those real quick before I forget. So I'm just going to select the teeth, shift select the rig and then Parent the teeth to the lower teeth bone object. And now when I move the jaw, the teeth stay with it. I had noticed earlier they were clipping or they were, they were staying in place. So, um, but yeah, I just, I didn't want to forget to do that. Sorry. That was definitely a distraction, but, um, uh, so let's, let's disable that again though. And then, uh, let's see. This guy can, the, the high poly one, he can be copied into a, an active collection. Um, let's, let's just put all of these, which are old copies and stuff into the others. So they're out of our way. Let's make one for scene. I'm just cleaning up my collections a little bit because it's going to be a lot easier to deal with. Um, with the the clothing having like a whole bunch of different materials and stuff it's going to be way easier to deal with that if i don't have um random collections just spewed all over the place so i'll turn on the clothing but i don't think i don't think this guy actually has any that fit him yeah i never made any so this this one that's uh Popping up on him right now. Oh, we got to load, load materials. Hopefully, it doesn't crash out right now. Don't know why that's such a big deal. It's just a flat texture. Uh, yeah, this thing, this thing here, is one that I started working on for the Minotaur character. So. Um, Basically, I don't need that. I'm just going to get rid of those. Scene is good to go. So I think we'll just reuse the clothes um, collection and we'll start going from there. So then what I'll do to make clothing, I have an old video about this. So some of you will have maybe seen that, maybe not. But basically, I like to use Retopo Flow. Um, and more or less just retopologize 
to match the body exactly where the clothing touches them. And then I can modify any parts of it that hang down, basically. But that'll that'll make life really, really easy for um, basically instead of like using edit mode, I'm just going to be able to draw clothing onto him. So let's let's just start with some basic ones. And then I might add pieces of armor on top of the clothing in layers later. But um, so more or less imagine that I'll, I'll make like a really thin, like almost underwear layer for him. And then we'll uh, we'll add armor plates on top of that. So hopefully we can control how the the armor deforms once we get it created by separating the armor plates because like you don't want steel plates to be bending because um, it's just going to make them look flimsy and it's not it's not going to make any sense. So let's start off with just a base a base material. Um, so yeah, so let's just start a retopo flow. Oh boy. Gotta, gotta always clear out all the, all the errors for retopo flow. Um, auto save. We don't need that. Um, source has an armature. Well, too bad for that. We don't have anything applied, so that shouldn't matter, but. So we're just going to start a new Rutopal flow at um, at active, and now it's going to make a new object, a new mesh called Rutopal flow. So I'll close this, um, and I f I feel like I just Rutop uh, Rutopoed this guy. I think it was only a couple weeks ago, and here we are again, doing more retopology. Painful, but um, try to see if that looks centered or not. Yeah, it's pretty close. Okay. So what we'll do is uh, we'll just start with really, really basic, um, like a shirt. And then we'll start something on his lower body just so I can uh, kind of start going. But let's do, let's do contours. And I'm just going to start right where it's a nice, easy section. So I'm going to go right here. And... 16 that actually looks like it'll be plenty of detail so now what's cool is i can just come in here and i can go from there to here and it'll just fill that in and then if i want to add a loop um, i can just control r like normal in normal blender and boom there you go double click this it'll select the loop and then i can just come down oh let's say maybe here um, I want to make sure that these vertices clip together at the middle there. Um, otherwise, they don't combine. There. So they have to they have to turn white or they're not connected. Loops. Let's just add a couple loops in here to make sure we're good to go. Um, why does that not want to do that? Loops. I guess I can just do it. Oh, there we go. Okay. So I'll just come add a couple. Um, it's not going to copy his body too much. I could probably copy the normal map to it. So it keeps the shape of his abs and stuff, but um, may not worry about it for the moment. Okay. So that's going to look okay. And then what I'll do here is we'll just draw this down a little bit and then so he'll have there will be a seam here where it'll be like a shirt and it'll be separate from the legs and i'll try to plan it so it matches the um texturing or the um the weight painting for the body so that when like the the top part of it moves versus the bottom part there's not any clipping that goes on so I think I think that's an okay start and I can always I can always modify it later in edit mode cuz it's just going to turn into a brand new mesh. So um I can't really hurt it. 
by doing anything, uh, you know, drastic or, or what have you. So I'm just going to come down here and add something like this. So it kind of just hangs down. It'll just be kind of a shield on the front. And maybe I'll, I'll um, come in one tier and then maybe come down to like here because that should deform fine around his leg. You know, it should rotate around in here, um, but this should all be fine. Trying to decide if I should put another loop there, but honestly, probably, you probably wouldn't need armor there. So um, we'll call that good. I want it to be pretty low topo because I don't need all that detail. Um, and then I can always subdivide it if it's clean topology. So now, um, let's see, what should we do? So for the, the arms might be different ones. The upper body is one, the lower body is one. He might have ones on his legs and stuff. So I think this is it for this one. So let's exit. And then um, I'll shade this smooth. And now I'll hide, I'll hide his body. You got to move this out too. Uh, where's the copies one? I think I put it in here. Um, but if I hide the body, you can see that we just have this super simple um, little guy here. Oh, looks like it didn't combine those vertices, which is not a problem. I'll just merge at center. And it didn't like that. Yeah. All righty. I wonder why it's doing that. Oh, it's because we still have the mirror modifier. So when you when you start a retopo flow, the um, displacement and mirror modifiers apply automatically. So I'll just turn on clipping, and that'll that'll merge them, and then they'll stay centered like that. But yeah, so that looks pretty good. So object mode. Um, so now if I want more detail, I can just go in there and subdivide it. But we have some extra modeling to do, so I'll turn his body back on. So obviously that's too small. So what I'll do is just scale it slightly. Um, basically until it's just thicker than he is everywhere. Oh, and then I need to... I'll have to reparent this later. So I'm just going to set the origin to um, the geometry. Actually, that's why it does that. I need to apply the mirror and the displacement. I guess really I can just delete the displacement, but now we just have a mesh. So, um, I'm going to set the origin to the geometry, and then when I scale, um, I can I can make it just a little bigger than him, and I can do it in edit mode as well. So let's mirror, and then okay. So I don't want to do too much. Um, I just want to. I want to move in the Y direction to get the chest to come out a little. We'll get these moved out in the X direction just a bit. So, and the other thing to keep in mind is um, because of the normal map and the, the body details that we'll get, I might have to move these even further later, but that's okay because what we'll do is um, we'll set up this armor however we think it looks good and then um, to change how it looks, we'll change the thickness. So we'll basically push the mesh back inward to make it 
appeared to be like a thick material. So right now there's an air gap in between the body and uh, this material or this clothing, but um, that's not gonna hurt us at all. Okay, so this one, all right, now if I go back to object mode, I'm just gonna scale it ever so slightly more. Maybe just in the X and Y. I think Z is good. So now we've got this kind of oversized um, plate here and I'll be able to mess around with it quite a bit. Uh, yeah, but I'll be able to come cut out vertices, add, you know, add and subtract thickness. You can sculpt on this, you do whatever you want. But let's uh, let's throw some metallic on there. Um, let's just call it armor metal for now. For the armor, I'll definitely do all of that in um, substance painter because that has really good uh, metals and fabrics. All right, so we'll make it a little rough, make it very metallic. Um, yeah, we'll just start, we'll just start putting some, let's see what, I don't think you'd have gold armor, but it might get the point across better that it's a metal. Um, to try to get like, like a bronze color. I don't really want the rose gold color, but let's try to get a bronze. That'll be kind of cool. All right, let's see what it looks like in paid preview. Come on now. Don't load slow on me now. Okay. Um, yeah, and, and truthfully, a lot of this will be fabric and then there'll just be armor plating on top of it. But um, I think it'll help kind of just visualize what it's gonna look like. What's my VRAM use? Yeah, even in, even in, um, I always forget what they're, what they're called. Uh, material preview mode here. Uh, I'm using 5.3 gigs of VRAM, which is just silliness because there's not really anything else enabled in the scene. Or at least I don't think there is. Yeah. So kind of crazy how heavy that is, but oh here. Get this light pulled out. There we go. Uh yeah. But then I can do this whole process for multiple armor pieces. Um so like the next one might be his arms. So I'll come back in here. Um oh, and that's the other thing we need to do. We need to change this to uh, let's just call it, let's just call it chest plate for now. Probably make separate armor ones and fabric parts. So there will be two or three or four for each piece and then straps and shields and stuff like that. We'll add, we'll add even more, but for now, let's start the next one and we'll do the arms. All right. And, and like, like everything else you can uh you can easily do all of this in blender without using add-ons i just have this anyway so i'm gonna go ahead and use it let's see so he's gonna have some sort of big shoulder plate thingies so maybe let's just let's just start with those we definitely want to make sure we have plenty of topology here because he's going to have um there will be a lot of geometry up there so i'm going to add a couple extra loops and as long as they stay in line here it's not as important as retopology is but um, as long as they stay in line we should be okay with uh you know subdividing them and stuff So 
so I'll just be fairly brief with it. I don't think I don't think we're gonna need relax some of this a little. I don't think we're gonna need um to go down the arm very far. Because really we're we're just we're just doing the cloth base of this clothing item first. I think that's gonna be the best way. Still have kind of like a shoulder pad and then a little bit on his arm. Um I'm trying to think. Yeah, I'll have it go down his arm a little more. Might as well. You can always take it off if we don't want it. So I'll just do like a few. I think that'll work. Maybe I'll add one more loop there. And then it's got to deform like his body. So we want enough loops by things like elbows. And anywhere this looks like it's not following the body enough. Yeah, that's actually looking decent. And then it's on the other side, so we just exit. And we'll have to modify these in a second, but let's go ahead and apply our modifiers. And honestly, shading flat on this kind of kind of gets the point across better. So let's maybe do that for now. I wonder what that looks like in material preview. Cool. Yeah, starting to look starting to look pretty legit. Um Yeah, so as far as as far as like um major topics i guess um i'm going to be just building some armor pieces for this guy so if you are watching and you are interested in that stick around but just so you're aware that's what i'll be working on all right and then we need to call these Call these greaves for his arm. I just want to remember to name these so that um, Rutopo Flow doesn't get confused or override anything. I don't think it really can, but. Okay, now this guy's legs are very blocky. So armor wise, I don't think I want to go overboard. Uh, let's just see. Worst case, we can always change it. Options. We want to go symmetry. X. Right. And we'll just do our contours again. Um, his shoulders and stuff up here, we'll probably have to have their own armor because I don't know how well they'll follow the legs so I might just do lower lower leg ones right here something like that and we'll just make sure we catch a lot of detail around any joints anywhere there's significant topology changes we can add some extra detail um, but again, this is going to be more or less scaled um, outward a lot, and it's going to be flattened a lot. So probably no no reason to get super worried about how it works or how the topology flows on here. I think the one biggest problem would be if we um, create a mesh that can't deform with the body. So right now I'm just using the relax tool to better fit the body. And I think his I think his feet we're gonna leave uncovered for now. Maybe I'll put weapons of some sort on them, like spikes or whatever. But for now we're gonna just leave it. I'm gonna add loops where I see the body's clipping a bit, just to just to give it enough detail to work with. I think that's pretty sweet. So we'll exit.
front leg plates, why not? And then I'm going to go apply my mirror. Let's see. Yeah, let's just apply the displacement. I kind of like that it, it offsets it a little bit automatically. So I might just leave that. Armor metal. Uh, what's he look like now? Starting to get a little more official. Yeah, so then the other the other cool thing that I'll be able to do is um, I can copy the weight paints from his body to these simple objects. And then uh, when I go to add like um like like seams on the edges of these or like uh you know there would be like a, a raised lip on the outside of the armor like a border kind of um when i go to add that i can sculpt it separately as another object by copying this and if i do it will keep all of the weight paints so i won't have to redo all the weight painting so that's going to make life super super easy um, let's see, I don't know why I would have had that at not entirely metallic. There, give it a little shininess. But yeah, that's, that's looking pretty cool. So then I think for, for his side here, I'll probably do... Probably do like round ones on his front and back legs, like his hip area and his uh, the shoulder of the bowl. And then I'll have like a metal fabric that hangs between. Actually, I think I already know what material I want to use for that. So I'm going to do like a band around his belly. And then, hmm. I'm just trying to plan what's going to be easiest to make these pieces because the one's going to be just this whole side of them. So maybe I'll just do that. Just do one whole big one. We'll go back into here. New Retopa flow at active. Close this. All right. And then again, just like I always do symmetry by X. And let's just start with, just start with really vague general ones like this. And then what I'll do is I'll come out, um, I'll, I'll probably delete a bunch of the uh, vertices on the bottom of it so that I can basically form like the curve of him kind of but for now I'll just I'll just make them and then I'll delete them in edit mode here in a minute because I want to I want to also make sure I have enough detail um everywhere else so I can always move around topology if I need to sometimes it is really hard to get this just to move to where I want. You almost have to pull away from the mesh or from the center first and then go about it. Uh, yeah, I gotta move. Gotta move all these vertices till they merge. Otherwise the mesh will be not working. Okay, oh, this one, of course, one more. Every time you think you've got them all, there's one more. It's just a rule of Blender. All right. So then I can just do the same thing like I did earlier with the strokes tool. And I probably actually need um, some additional topology in here because his um, hip bones here have some extra curvature to him kind of up on this area so really he probably wouldn't have armor there so let's just maybe go 
with the strokes tool and we'll just do like let's just do these patches here and then i'm going to try to draw them all the way to his butt like this and it kind of adds topology automatically which is really really nice takes a good guess at it but He's got some clipping back here on his rear end. So we'll add some extra loops just to give him enough detail. All right, and then I think we can, we can probably play with that better later. I'll relax some of these because they don't need to be as, um, Close together up on top especially and then the front I think that'll be fine we'll actually leave actually leave that um, I'm gonna add loops down on his belly shouldn't need a ton but I want to be able to follow his the curve of his body more do that okay that should look good maybe put one here Good consistent um, size of topology is a, is always helpful, so you don't have planes that are significantly different. All right, so I think I think we got plenty to work with on that, and we'll delete a bunch out of the bottom. So we'll exit. Let's go to apply our modifiers. Displacement will apply. Now this one I'll call, um, let's just call it body armor. Or let's see, maybe main body, main body armor, something like that. Looks like it's still, still clipping a little bit. Let's, Set the origin to the geometry, and then let's scale this out just a hair. I don't want to go too far, but a lot of this will be um, changed up anyway. And then this guy's going to also get the armor. Sweet. And then edit mode. So now on edit mode, I can pick out a bunch of it. So probably only have, I can select some of these loops. Let's see, maybe I'll just go by certain height. So I'll just delete like a bunch of this. And then, Maybe some of these faces, because it's got to deform. It's got to deform properly. Shoot, I think that's going to work. Now let's go preview him. All right. Um, what if we shade these smooth? What do they look like? Pretty cool. He's def the armor is definitely too shiny, but uh, we can get we can get some roughness on there just to see because it's not going to be pretty metal. It's going to be damaged or or scuffed up stuff. Um, looks like. YouTube's yelling at me about my bit rate, so let me know if it's real bad or something, if the quality drops too much. Let's see, I think we might have anisotropic issues or something here. Nah, looks like it's fine. 
specular. Not too bad. No, but that looks pretty cool. So smooth. I never used that, but that almost looks better. Not really even sure what the difference is, but yeah. So um, we've got a really good start here. You'd probably, I'll probably make some sort of a pad that goes here and then an oversized one attached that goes back here. Um, but I'm feeling like the front of him is going to be what you put armor on, not the back, because he's not going to need it on his back leg too much or on his spine. So having it back here may not matter. Maybe I'll make like a helmet for him though. That, that could be cool. But the beauty of using Retopo Flow for this is that it helps you keep your um, your topology nice and clean. I can easily subdivide these and uh, work with them because there's nothing there's nothing weird. So if I if I copied parts of his body that had additional edge loop flow to them, it would be hard to bring them back to a nice even. Um, Apology spacing. So let's do an at active here and we'll build something on his head. And since this guy's not just a horse, we get a little more creativity because he'd probably have armor in places that they wouldn't worry about the horse having. Uh, um, contours, maybe. Maybe they wouldn't care. I don't know. Okay, so this one's going to be a little different because he's not going to have it go all the way around his head. No, he will. We'll start it that way. So let's just do a contour all the way back here. And let's, so if I hold shift and then scroll wheel, I can add topology just by uh, um, scrolling the mouse wheel, which is cool. So basically, I'm just going to add a couple loops here and then. I'm definitely going to delete most of it from the bottom of his face. Uh, but it'll be a nice, easy starting point. So I can grab the strokes and take these ones and just draw up to maybe here. Okay, why did you not draw to the center there, Blender? Get those to link up. Okay, that'll look cool. Might tweak them so that they have more of a kind of roundedness to the front like that. Like, yeah, that'll be cool. All right. And then I think a loop here would probably be good to start with. Uh, Let's tweak these up. Since I know I'm going to get rid of a lot of the um, the loops from the bottom, I'm just going to add extra details to the top where I know I'm going to keep it. So I'll probably have it like follow his forehead kind of. So I'm just going to provide myself enough detail to work with. And then this corner here, so it's probably going to be kind of this middle part here that, that actually follows all the way up his face. Um, but yeah, so... Once I get some armor on him and stuff, I'll probably build him like a bow and a shield and things like that. If I think the next thing I'll do, though, is actually get him in a scene and have him destroying some stuff. Because it's about time to like finally produce a cool animation. And I think I'm just going to do a whole bunch of simulations. So particles and uh, destruction stuff and all that. So that's that's where it's heading. It's going to be cool, I think. There we go. Tweak tools a little better. Yeah, all right. Let's see. So I might have this one kind of form like a 
more of a curved shape around his face. That'd be cool. So it'll just kind of have a piece that hangs down that's sharp looking. I might do that. Which we're going to need some additional loops in here if we're playing that kind of game. And then maybe one this way. A lot of this topology is going to be cut out anyway. Uh, I should have just put about twice as many in here, but that's okay. All right. And then so far, it's not tied to his head at all. So I'm going to have to probably bring it all the way around to here. So I'm just going to keep drawing strokes tool. And let's just see how, let's just see how this program does. Um, let's see. And it has to deform with him. So it probably would realistically stop higher on his neck. And then his neck would have to have just some sort of chain mail. Because I'm not going to be able to deform the um, a solid object that goes all the way down his neck. Or it'd have to be massively oversized, which is poss um, possible, I suppose. But let's bring, let's bring these over a little. And then it will kind of flare out here. And then basically, yeah, we're just going to add some, we're just going to add some additional strokes in here. And I want to keep, I want to keep these very blocky. So I'm not going to make them like super smooth, uh, curvy edges. Like they're going to be these kind of squared off points. Um, because you're, you're probably not going to have, nice soft fabricy stuff it's going to be like a, a hard metal or whatever uh, but that just makes it really really easy to model these so i don't have to think about smoothing it too much okay so it kind of splits comes over his face so then somewhere in here it has to be tied back might just have it kind of Follow his chin like that a little more. And then all of this stuff underneath all cut out. Well, no, maybe I can't. Maybe just some of it. Yeah, that's what we'll do. So we'll just we'll just kind of make it like a little a uh, chin strap situation and then maybe I'll have one come all the way around. Yeah, that's what I'll do. So let's let's draw this guy out to here. And then we'll turn it. I'll move it and I'll move this one and move this one. Probably not going to make very good Apology flow if I do that. Okay. And it'll be some sort of some sort of version of this, but I can modify it later. Okay, yeah, but like that. And then um, I'll just have it, whoops, I'll just have it kind of follow the side of his head. And then it can come up here. I'll move this and move this. And then basically with the goal to tie these points into each other. Of 
click that one, click this one. Whoops, don't know why it selected that one down there. But I click those, so now that is a nice loop. Relax this a little so it follows the form. Um, same here, same here, same here. I think this relax tool is maybe one of my favorites now of all of Blender because this is just so easy to use. I mean, look at that. It just knows that I wanted to do that. That's so cool. Change these. It's going to keep all the vertices spaced out nice and even. They're going to follow the topology on their own. It's all from one tool. So then, yeah, in here I'll probably just um, somehow I'll cut out a few of these pieces. Um, yeah, what's that? Let's add one more loop to that. That way is probably fine, and then I'll tweak it to make it thicker. Don't really know why yet, but I think that just seems like the best idea. We'll do it. So I'll just, I'll just pull this down a little. Pull this side up. And then those might hang off of his neck. They may not be super tight to his neck. I don't know yet. And if I relax these, should make that a nice uniform curve. Look at that. That is so nice. That is just the best thing. I mean, can you imagine? I was just talking about this with somebody. Can you imagine if they actually trained AIs to be useful instead of just making Dwayne the Rock eating rocks? Because um, if you had if you had other like tools in 3D that were this simple to use as just that smooth tool, I mean, you it would make life so much easier in a lot of things. But yeah, so let's exit that. Back to object mode. Let's call this one helmet. And then we'll go do our modifiers quick. Mirror, apply, displacement, apply. All right. Uh, armor metal, material preview. It's interesting how long it takes to load these shaders in. I wonder if it's the um, the HDRI that I'm using. It could be. But yeah. There is at least the start of what he'll look like. Let's go to let's go to actual rendering. So we'll have some topology stuff to do to get these weird reflections to come off, but um, and actually let's turn the Let's turn a little bit of reflection on to the floor so that we can get some light back up on him. That helps a little. There you go. Um, yeah, so a lot of this, that's that's gold now, will just be cloth like the strap around his neck. Up here will all be cloth, and then it'll tie to... Um, maybe cloth here or whatever, and then you'll have some plating on his face, you know, stuff like that. Um, this kind of looks familiar. I wonder why. I don't remember. Probably a superhero movie. I don't know. I wouldn't have paid attention enough to remember if I had watched those. Um, and then I'll... Got rid of the loops I don't want on his belly, his legs. I just don't I just don't know if he'd have armor on his legs. I suppose you'd I suppose maybe you'd put some like shin plates on, wouldn't you? So let's do that. But then at least all of the big fabric chunks would be blocked out. Um 
And at very least, I, I could really even go into substance and turn all these things into chain mail because I do have a chain mail uh, material in there, which is really cool. Um, and even then it would look cool, but I think there's a lot of work to do on the clothes. So I'm going to zoom in here to his leg. And we'll start another retopo or some shin plate thingies on the back. But then everything will be blocked out and we can start doing details. I got to go to bed. Yeah, poor man, I bet you do. You had a bit of a long week. Congrats on all your uh, success this week, too. That's super cool, man. I mean, I wouldn't have done it out there in the 106 degrees because that's wild. But I guess that's kind of your guys' thing. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll let you know. Poor man Pokemon is a is a friend from real life, so we talk regularly in the real world as well. But yeah, man. See you soon. Um really can't deform his legs much, so I'm just gonna start him like pretty low on him, maybe down here. I don't really know how it would hold on to his legs anyway. Um, just because it wouldn't have anything to attach to. So I'll end up having to make some sort of fabric system to like suspend them anyway. But we'll call that good. I suppose you could put little plates on the front of his feet, but I'm not. I'm not going to right now. I think adding extra like armor plates and stuff would would be something you could easily do later because you you would have all the deformations figured out and then you could add stiff plates that don't deform and um probably just parent them to like vertex groups without weight painting so just clean this stuff up real fast all right yeah so i don't know I don't know if anybody was watching there, but you just got a full view of him. Nice and clean topology. Um, that's probably plenty of details for now. All right, so we'll go back to object mode, do all of our uh, modifier stuff, material, armor metal, all right, looking pretty cool, let's see, what, what color would it actually be, let's make it more of a silver. Because I think that's I think that's going to be more of the case. Might have a little bluish tint from um, the finishing on it, but maybe something like that. And then. Uh, realistically, I'll probably have to come in and modify, uh, let's see, what was I going to say? I'll probably have to change and take out a bunch of these planes and stuff like that to, uh, work with deformations because I kind of can already tell there's going to be some issues, but, um, yeah, I've never built full body armor. So having like um like how do you attach these leg ones down here to the rest of it because they obviously won't really just stick on there. I guess I could make them laced in the back or something like that, you know, but um Yeah, as far as how you actually weight paint and deform these, be very very interesting. 
but if I, I don't think, and maybe I'm wrong, hopefully I'm wrong, I don't think the add-on parents automatically. Yeah, no, see, so it'll just leave, um, it'll just leave the armor where it was. Um, <clears throat> so what I'll do is I won't, I won't parent them with automatic weights like you would with the character's body. What I'll do is I'll set up a um, data transfer modifier on here. And then I'll parent them to the rig with empty groups. And then I'll use that data transfer modifier to more accurately tune how the clothing follows the body. Because you can act like in the viewport, you can deform the the rig and see what effects it has. Um, instead of instead of dealing with um, basically having it just move around the clothes however it wants. So you can like, before you apply it, you can see what, what it does basically. You can see how it looks. But yeah, I think, I think this guy's looking pretty dang cool. Um, the clothing is gonna take a significant effort to finish. So, oops, I need to rename these. Just call those rear leg plates because I don't know what terms you would use for the armor on a centaur, so it's going to be different. Um, Ripa, who I don't think he's here, I think he went to bed, but he was telling me I should probably add some extra armor in this region here, maybe an upside down helmet. Um, don't know if I'll get to that yet or not, but that's probably a good point. Uh, yeah, but so next steps, which I probably won't do on this stream tonight because I actually have a video I want to edit tonight yet. Um, but what I'll do is obviously keep working on the clothing because he's not just going to have these magic metal, metal plates. Um, Um, and then I'll add some extra hair groups that just accent him, but like so much of it would be covered now that having done full body hair would be pointless. So I'm glad we didn't. And this is going to look just fine. But, um, Mr. Krabs says, Hey, sorry to bug you about this. Can you help me edit a small part of a 3d model for my daughter's birthday? I completely understand. If not, it's all good. Um, oh, here I'm reading the ch the the comment out loud, and then the next the next comment is, could you also type your reply in chat as my audio isn't working? Um, I'll just say, I'll say yes, I can do that. Um, leave a comment on a video so we can get in touch. How about that? I one one limitation of live streaming on YouTube is that I can't I we can't really get in touch. I can't get in touch with people directly through here. So it can be really hard because people can't share links and uh you have to kind of play back and forth, but um we'll just say that and then we'll do one of these, I don't know, we'll put a little, we'll put a little smiley face in there. Of course it fell off the page, but um, yeah. Yeah, if people, if people want me to help them with stuff, you know, quick little things or little like um, help sessions, I love doing that stuff. You know, part of what I'm doing is trying to teach people what little I know. So if you ever want something or some input or want to work on something together, just let me know. Um, you know, I may or may not be open to it, so just get a hold of me, but um yeah. I mean if if anyone's wondering, you can find me under the same name on Instagram and uh Reddit, although I'm not on Reddit as much as I used to be, just because not a lot of good stuff comes out of Reddit, but um it is one way to message me, so um 
I'll just put that in here. And what do you call this? And and my little uh, Minotaur head for the channel and mascot. That's it. So that people will know that they're looking at the right account by the Minotaur being on all of my branding. Um, but uh, I I know it's it's not a good idea at this stage. But I am so excited to see what this looks like with posable armor. So let's just let's just go ahead and get that going. Um, I don't have those accounts. Could I email it? I'll just say that. Um, they say, can I just email it? And um, I'll say, yes, just use the YouTube email in my about page. So if you guys ever want to get a hold of me that way too, you can use the email address that's associated with my YouTube channel. So, um, yeah, all right. Let's, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select these objects by seam and I'm actually going to separate them because I don't want to try to deal with weight paints on objects that are um, one object that's on two sides I'm not sure how that works so I'm going to just call this left and right Uh, front legs will have to be the same thing. So I'll select, oops, just select one, separate selection, enter object mode, and now I have a front leg plates right, because these are his right and left, not ours. Left, okay, so those are separate. Um, back leg, edit mode, click off so nothing's pre-selected. Again, I'm clicking L, and it's using the seam selector. So it's going by, like, uh, um, pre-made UV unwraps, kind of, or just, like, it's kind of using loose parts, basically. But once I've selected just the one, I can right-click separate selection and once i'm in object mode now there's two separate objects i didn't have to do any funny business with copying and mirroring and anything else um, then i can just rename them so that's how you make mirrored objects with two different parts a uh, separate object So now the only problem with how I just separated those is I'm going to have um, every single one of these, I'm going to have to run the data transfer modifiers and kind of set up the weight paints, which isn't the end of the world, but um, it is, you know, six instead of three times I have to do that for his limbs. But it is what it is. I'm not too worried about it. So here I'll show you how to data transfer. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna take his body plate here, add a data transfer modifier. The source is gonna come from the uh, from his actual body. Okay, so I'm telling Blender I want to copy the weight paints. Um, we're gonna take vertex data, vertex groups. I think I normally use nearest edge vertex. But um, this stuff you can change in um, like on the fly, so you can preview everything. Um, you like you don't have to apply it to see how it works, basically. So 
I'm going to do that. And then what I need to do is I need to parent this to the armature with empty groups. And it's going to, it's going to basically create weight paints based on everything that the armature has. And then this modifier is going to transfer the nearest edge vertex weight paints onto this model, onto this piece of clothing. So now you can see this part of the clothing is not only parented, but if I go into pose mode and move them around, that um, that armor will will bend and move with the character, which is pretty cool. But it, I mean, it already looks like it's working pretty well. So, um, so like if he's going to be knocking something over, he'll probably lower his front end, and he'll have to move his feet, you know, whichever way. But it looks like the armor is deforming mostly like the body does, which it should because that's what the modifier is for. Um, so let me turn the overlay off. So now, whoops, I'll select his hip again. So now if I turn that off, if I if I rotate him, uh, you can see that it follows his body really nice. Then all you have to do is... Um, then all you have to do is decide where to put the armor plates based on how much of the mesh moves. So like here, if I wanted armor that wasn't just cloth, I would probably put one right here, right in the middle, because I, I noticed that whenever I move him around, uh, that part of it doesn't seem to change much. And then I could also put one on his thigh area back here because that doesn't change much. So you would kind of plan out extra pieces to add on top because you don't want metal armor to be deforming. Uh, oops, I need to clear that pose. All pose clear. Yada, yada, yada. Okay. Um, Furzawa says, what kind of data is that data transfer modifier copying to other object? Um, like vertex group or weight painting. It's like parenting one object to another. Yeah, so if <clears throat> if I were to take this, this piece of armor and just uh, shift select and parent with automatic weights, it's not going to work because uh, it's not the same as his body. So it's not going to deform the same as his body deforms, especially because if you look like right up here, there's an air gap. It's not, it's not the same volume. Um, there's empty spots here where there's no topology, stuff like that. So what, so what that modifier does is it says um, it, it goes another step further into calculating the weights. So it says it says, look at this object, which is the the body that I called the source in here. Um, and it says, I want you to replace. I want you to replace the what the vertex groups, which is the weight paints. Um, based on what kind of mapping nearest edge vertex so basically it's saying okay um everything that's closest to a vertex on the body gets a weight paint that matches the vertex so then when i deform a rotation of certain number of degrees will cause this part of the mesh to to deform the same way that it causes the body to deform so it i think it just adds a little extra step of of uh converting it because the topology of this looks like this and then if i hide that his body is different so he's got extra loops in here that the i'll turn the armor on that the armor here does not have so um it it basically is just converting mismatched topology that's kind of the same shape Um, I can, I can check into the email. Yes. See if I got it. Um, I may not, 
Okay, let's see. I guess, oh yeah, he doesn't have. Okay. Um, sorry for that for that comment because he doesn't have audio. I will. Um, yes, yes, Furuzawa, yes. So you don't have to match the uh, the topology or redo weight paints. You just copy them, and then it basically converts them to be the closest matching thing. Uh, and it works really well. And and what's cool is if if it wasn't working, like if it didn't look good, you can just change these settings. So you could change the mapping type. And um, it's very possible that different mapping types will work. And uh, you don't have to apply it until you want to. So then once once I see that it deforms properly, so I you know I'll get in here and test it just like I would with a rig. And I move him around, just do completely extreme stuff, you know, move his leg, alt, whatever. If it all looks good, then you can apply that modifier and be done. If it doesn't look good, you keep tweaking. So it's super nice because you don't even have to redo weight paints at all. Um, and then, yeah, for the for this uh, Mr. Krabs commenting, I will work on it soon, but not during the stream as it is off topic, but yes, I can do that. Okay, so um, currently not on topic to work on somebody's model, but um, Mr. Krabs in the chat wants me to help him with a simple mesh modification, which is fine, I can do that. So not a problem. Um, all right, yeah, so we'll just say that. Uh, crushes and good cans, yes, yes, I, I think I know how to do it, so, but that's all fine and good. So anyway, um, yeah, like I was saying, if, if somebody wants me to work on a character or if you want me to build you a character or something like that, just get in touch. Um, you know, obviously if it's to this extent, like this guy, it's going to be some amount of a cost to it because uh, this takes a long, long, long time for me. Probably just because I'm not good enough yet, but um, they just take forever. So, um, but yeah, so let's, let's parent a couple more of these. Because these will really probably become mostly just the cloth. Um, so, body, replace, vertex, groups, nearest, nearest edge vertex. Uh, and that should be normally what I need to do. Now, see, this is a, this is a great example here. Um, this one is is significantly out from his body, and if I turn on the topology here, we'll do that. We'll disable overlays. You can see the black on top of the orange wireframe. They're very, very, very different topologies, and they have um, significantly different normals. So, like this is one where uh, you would otherwise have to do it custom with weight painting. But um, with this data transfer, you won't have to. So I'm going to parent with empty groups again, and then go back to our modifier. And um, let's try to deform again. So it's it's clearly parented. Pose mode. Uh, let's just let's just rotate his body a little. So now I'm not I'm not going to say. I might know what I'm doing, but I think I might because look how, look how well this, um, 
deforms with his body. So he, it doesn't really clip through anywhere. Um, maybe a little right here. It's got some sort of a weight paint conflict going on in here, but um, I can obviously just tune it. Let's see, let's just clear the pose. But um, everything up here, woo! What bone do I have? Oh, I have all of them. Um, yeah, if I rotate this, the uh, the hanging part of the armor stays put. And then if I were to grab like his foot, even if I go obnoxious places that this foot can't go, um, it's deforming this part of the tail. And also one other thing to note, just since we're on the topic, um, if you look at this modifier, uh, let me select this. Um, to really see how this is actually going to look, you have to apply it. So some of those issues it was having are going to happen in the viewport. Once you once you apply the data transfer modifier, it's going to look a lot better. So like it gives you a preview of it, but um, it's not going to be anywhere near as accurate as once it's applied. So you can apply it, test it, and then you know if just be smart with saving your files. Basically, is what I'll say. Uh, but you could just undo until you get back to where it wasn't yet. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm actually going to leave all those modifiers open because I'm not sure that I want to keep the weight paints yet because I'll modify everything. Uh, but there's no reason that you couldn't because you could also just delete all the vertex groups and start over. Uh, it's just, you know, at this point, I don't know for sure that I'm going to need to, so I'm going to wait. Um, that one should be good. So we'll parent, parent to the rig. Parent with empty groups. Okay, we'll just move right to the other side. Parent with empty groups. And then data transfer modifier. Data transfer has to be above the armature, I believe. So um, you want to make sure you set it up that way. If you if you add the you can add the empty groups first by parenting, or you can add the data transfer first. I don't believe it matters. Uh, but all of his upper body ones except the helmet should be set up now. So I'll just grab his hips again, and we'll rotate him. So the arms kind of work. So like here's what I was saying. Um, it, it looks confused here, but it's probably going to behave a lot better than that. So, um, realistically, I bet you it works. I bet it's not doing this, but, uh, you also might have to check weight paints. So if I click on that, let's go to weight paint mode and let's just go to, let's see, let's just put arm. Uh, let's see. And these are all L, so we need R's. Yeah. So the weight paints look like they should deform. Okay, you might have to come smooth them out. Um, but I think our modifier just needs to be applied, and it'll work. It'll work better. So let's just clear our pose again. Uh, and then let's demonstrate that because I wonder if that is true or not. Let's go ahead and um, let's just apply this. Okay. And then we'll go back to pose mode. So um, now you can see when I move, it deforms a lot better. So uh, the preview is not as good as the final once it's, once it's, you know, set up. So just, just be aware of that. Um, and, you know, you're going to get some clipping issues, but like here, um, I probably just need to take a couple edge loops off because his skin is coming through on the mosh, on the, on the, uh, arm, like armor here. And that's just because the topology isn't planned properly. I could probably also subdivide this so that it can actually bend there. Um, that may or may not help. 
but um, more or less it's working. Oh, and yeah, look, there you can see it's clipping through to begin with. So I need to modify this anyway. You know what I mean? Basically saying it's not, it's not the modifier's fault. I just have, um, I don't have it set up properly yet. So I'll leave that modifier open, not enabled. Um, this one on his head might be a little interesting. So let's see how this goes. Let's parent with empty groups. And then, oops, uh, did you see that mistake I made? We want to parent to the rig, not to the body. You don't want to parent to the mesh. You want to parent to the rig. So um, data transfer has to be above. Let's select a body, vertex data, groups, nearest edge vertex. Okay, now just pose him a little bit. Uh, that's not too bad. The chin strap part might be an issue because the other neck topology, but um, again, it needs to be applied first, so don't be don't be too worried about it. Uh, yeah. But basically, you can just do that for every single one of these, and it should work out just fine. Body, vertex, groups, nearest edge, vertex. And then we're going to go ahead and parent with empty groups. Make sure your modifiers are in the right directions, which they are. Same thing here, data transfer. It's so much harder to find it. There you go. Groups nearest edge vertex. All right. Now we just have his back legs. Nearest edge vertex. Yes, Blender is a um, very labor-intensive process for sure. So I don't I don't mind helping people out a little bit, um, but you know if you're if you're going to ask people for stuff, just you know be a little wary of how much time it takes. All right, armature. Data transfer, this one needs to be parented. With empty groups. With empty groups, and then I'll just make sure we don't have multiple armature modifiers on here. Uh, um, okay, so Mr. Crab says, I was also thinking, could you turn that the model that they shared with me on the email into a tutorial after the bowl, just in case, because learning the process might help me edit more models in the future. Totally okay if not. Um, I, I can, um, I might, I might use a different model if I can't figure out where that one came from. Um, like, but I, I can definitely see what it needs and, um, make one that is based on that. Yeah. I mean, doing work with clothing is very important. A lot of people could use it, although I think a lot of people would rather just get a clothing item from a store, which is also fine. Um, um, <laughs> um, I'll just say I'll look into 
maybe a why did that spell that wrong as if youtube typed the comment for me right uh since i don't own that one but i will i will see there just leave it just leave it a little open um yeah, looking at reference images, though, man, the Romans, they put a lot of armor on their horses, it looks like. They had full-body metal cloth, basically, that, that hung off of their midsections. Wild. Okay. Um, let's see, do we have anything missing? I think everything's attached. So if I want to come in here and make a super simple pose, let's let's put one leg forward, let's put one back. This one goes forward, this one goes back. Uh, there's no reason his tail needs to be up in the air. Not sure who he's yelling at with his arm there, but let's just get Let's just get him pulled down. Um, we'll just uh, we'll set up a little pose for the thumbnail here quick, and then probably call it good at the moment. Um. See, without those modifiers applied on his arms and his uh, chest there, it's going to look goofy. That's okay. We'll uh, we'll do it. We'll just apply them. I think one of the hardest things in posing, and maybe it's because of how I've built my characters, but making making this sort of like strong looking character look relaxed is a huge challenge um all right it's just let's just advance this a frame and we'll just save this pose We'll save it on frame two there. Okay. So obviously this this needs to be applied. Oh, I probably can't. Yep, I have to apply it first, I bet, before I deform. Let's see what happens if we put the armature ahead. Well, that might be the best way. Okay. I may stand corrected then. Well, no, because that one doesn't work. All right, whatever. It is what it is. I guess he can be in T-pose, huh? Yeah, I don't I don't think you want the armature on top, but if it comes to it, it comes to it. See, just rotate his arms out again. Yeah, it just clips, just clips through there a little bit. Hmm. All of his, 
leg ones look good, I think, just because the topology was playing better. But let's see what he looks like with some armor. All right. Well, um, yeah, we need we need a little extra thickness on some of these, which these are just going to be cloths that we'll build armor plates from. So, uh, so that's fine. You know, we'll we'll figure that out later. Because if I go back to T-Pose, um, it looks really cool. So, you know, it's a good start. Where's my camera? There's my camera set up. Um, let's render one. Probably have to change out the lighting because that's awful. Yeah, see, that's what it looks like. So let's go to the world. Um, I need to remember how to rotate an HDRI. Um, uh, I guess we could just turn that off. Do a low strength, and then maybe I'll just actually use my my sunlight. That probably looks better than just an HDRI anyway, right? Turn my wireframes. Turn this way up in the air. What is this? Is that one a sun too? How many suns do I need in a scene, you guys? Not that many. Let's just make this one a area light. We'll put it behind the camera. Let's just go 2,500 watts. Try that. Um, I think we got some overexposure on the skin for sure. I don't think it's the sun either. I think it's that point light. Yeah, there we go. And then we want a little bit of reflection on the armor there, but not not just completely whitewashing it. So let's maybe go with like that and that, see how that looks. Try that. That's eh, getting there. Looks like a gloomy day out, though. But anyway, um, I think you guys get the point. Um, Yeah, but that's, I mean, for for the basics, I think that'll look cool. Uh, we'll have we'll have to break up the color because um, his gray color with the, the metal is definitely too similar, and the background is kind of the same color palette, so this render isn't great uh, by any means, but, um, I mean, you get the idea. It's going to look, it's going to look, fairly cool um i need to add some extra detail to his eyes like color wise and i maybe maybe i'll tone back the skin color a little more although i don't i don't really mind that kind of mixed up color i think that's fine um his feet definitely need to be darker colored and then we'll add extra hair systems just little highlights just to make him look different um but yeah i think he's cool I don't know. You guys let me know. Let me know what you think.
I'm going to save this so we don't lose our progress. Exit the camera so I don't add keyframes. Um, yeah, but I think for now I'm going to call it. Um, definitely a good stream. Got a lot done on the guy. He's he's starting to look like something I'll actually be able to use in a scene. Um, pretty excited about that because I don't normally get characters to a point where I'm happy to use them. So, uh, I'll be in touch soon, guys. But thanks for hanging out with me and have a good night.